What's going on guys? Alpha the Wizard back at it with another video. Today we have me, Alpha the Wizard versus Jibriel XD. Um, he's actually one of my good friends. This actually isn't a tourney match or anything. This is just testing um, and Jib has been kind of kicking my butt, not gonna lie. Um, but yeah, so to start things off, we will see Jib it doesn't help that every time I play Jib, normally, like, 9 times out of 10, he does win the Rock, Paper, Scissors. So, I mean, it is what it is, though. You can still win going second, but it's just unfortunate. So, we see me opening Imperm, Gamma, Griffin, Plague, Nib. So, that's pretty solid. We got three high-impact hand traps, plus Griffin and Tuner. Um, and then we have uh, Sunny Snitch, Ronin, Ash, Jet, Starter. So his hand's pretty solid as well. So we'll go ahead and dive into it. He's going to start out with the Sunny. He's going to search Leela. And then he's going to summon the Leela. And all right, so let's think about this for a second here. Is it worth it to imperm or gamma? In my mind, I feel like looking back on it, imperm is probably the better move and then save gamma for the gigantic. Um, I think I went ahead and just gamma this. Um, the reason why this was actually bad to do is because if we imperm this, this forces him to have another monster to special. And if he does get to a gigantic play, we have the gamma for backup. So I actually kind of misplayed there, to be honest. Um, but I was thinking if I just remove this, you know, what else does he do? But then that turns off my imperm. So that's why this was so bad. Bring out gamma, driver. And then this is the punish. He has starter. And now he can make a giant guy in under five summons. So he definitely can play around Nib here too. Yeah, definitely imperming that was what we could have done differently. I think that would have changed the whole outcome of this game, to be honest. But instead, he's just going to go ahead and full combo, get to the giant guy. Now we can't stop it. He brings out Swap Frog. Yeah, I guess going for the Toad play is probably better here instead of the Live Twins. But the Live Twin plays are pretty solid too because you get a free draw plus like, you know, a pop. And then a draw and a pop on my turn. Uh, so he's just going to go ahead and summon Red, bounce back swap, get the Ronin out of hand, summon swap. Doesn't swap effect, wants to leave it in deck for the Toad probably. Bring out Elf, Elf summon, swap. Banish swap for Ronin, going to Toad, set smashers, pass turn. Alright, so opponent has um, two interruptions with Toad, uh, three with Red, and then smashers and Ash Blossom. So yeah, it's pretty solid. So we just go ahead and imperm the Elf, since there's really not a way for us to break this, given we know exactly what our opponent has. So, I mean, yeah, messing up with not imper imperming first definitely hurt us. Because if we just go e Telly, he just can Toad Negate. Or just wait till we summon Ziamen and then Toad Negate that. Chain Elf to bring back Toad while I still have the monster. Uh, so e Telly, but it doesn't even matter because he has Ash. Um... Yeah, and that's just game. So moving on to game two, we're going to see me out for the wizard going first. And it is 45 versus 41. Kind of interesting. Our hand is actually really, really solid here. We have right plus a tuner plus starter plus a pointer and then also a free right for the plague if we need to do that. So we're going to go ahead and do this place, but our opponent does have Prosperity, Jet, Frost, Red, and Droll. 
nobody's really playing droll right now but it's really insane against the adventure decks so it's like i can't blame him for like siding it in if that's what he did so we're gonna trigger this to go ahead and search griffin there's an argument where i could have just normal summoned plague to search draco back given our opponent we, like we don't know if they have droll or not and nobody's playing this so we're not even thinking about droll I think I just did this as a safe play to check for Ash, and then we can get the Draco back anyway, just in case our opponent has mine and we, we can save it. That's actually why I did it this way, because I don't want to discard the Draco back necessarily unless I have to in the combo. Like stacking the Draco back for Plague is really, really solid. So bring out blue go into Hulk, chain link one Hulk, chain link two fateful didn't activate fateful uh and we oh yeah obviously because yeah we don't we might have to end up outing the token anyway and i guess just getting draco back on his turn is better since we're under droll bring out the plague this should still be combo. Go elf, elf effect to get the plague. Summon the plague and then turn plague token. Yeah, I guess since we're under droll, we have to use one of these bodies. And I think the token was just better because this has a high defense. And we didn't have to use the Draco back. Get dagged up. Okay, and let's think about this. There's a reason why I set a pointer with no cards in hand. Because as soon as like we can summon a body, we can just trigger the Faithful to get the Draco back and then reveal it and like rip something from our opponent's hand. So that's why we did it this way. So yeah, we're set up with Elf, um, Dagda, and Hulk and Grave. So we just need our opponent to commit to the field. That's really all we need. So chain Dagda to this. Um, that plays into Gamma really hard. I probably shouldn't have shotgun Dagda. I probably should have just waited for that. Set Scythe. And then our opponent sees two Jet, two Live Twin Monsters. Smashers and Starter. So that's actually really good for them. Get Starter. There's an argument that he could have got Smashers here. No, probably better to get Starters so you can get the Sprite Engrave, the card. Trigger Fateful. Search the Draco back. And then here, we're going to go ahead and try to Scythe Lock, trigger Elf. I feel like there's a reality he should have summoned Jet here because now he's just going to get Scythe Locked. Um, actually, probably can't through Red, right? No, that was actually pretty smart. Normal Red first, and then Chain Starter. Um, why did I do this here oh i flipped it back down yeah this is just the testing match so it's not like you know we're in a tournament or anything um let's see oh i said a pointer after blue definitely was a little preemptive so he searches a second jet because now he knows i have a pointer because being a little preemptive so yeah guys this, this is things you really really want to catch like it's very easy to just shotgun a pointer just hold off and like just let your opponent know you're thinking when they're committing to their plays and you know take your time like not too much time but you have to take a second to think if this is optimal optimal to do it right now or when you should so we just go ahead and appoint her, reveal the Draco back, and see that we're basically screwed because he has too many extenders. Um, 
I definitely think right here, Frost is probably better because he already normal summoned. Um, and if he does get to the giant guy, this is just a free body. But no matter what, his hand is like really good. So yeah, we just hit the Frost. Uh, summon Jet. Jet effect. It's going to go ahead and get him Smashers. Yeah, Smashers. And then Chain... Chain Hawk on res, Chain Red, so now it's pretty much just clean up from here. I don't know, there's a few things I could have done differently, but it doesn't help that he had Droll. I think not revealing that I had a pointer kind of like screwed me though, because if he didn't search a second jet, him knowing I had a pointer definitely could have changed his search. So he could guarantee Smashers. Because Smashers just kind of puts in work. Giant guy gets Swap Frog. He's going for the Toad line. Oh. No. I guess he's not. Wait, is there a reality... He just makes elf. Like, why? Why do we need to do that? I'm trying to figure it out, actually. Don't you feel like going into elf for the toad line would be better? And then, yeah. He still has frogs in deck, standby phase, bring out a frog, set smashers, pass on elf toad smashers. And then, yeah, I feel like that would have been pretty good, right? I mean, I guess it didn't matter because he could only clear one body anyway. So you might as well get in more damage with the gigantic. That's yeah, that actually makes more sense. I see why he did that. That was pretty smart on his part. Just to get more damage in. Go for Toad, set Smashers, end phase Scythe. Um, that actually can't summon because of Gigantic. Oh, it actually goes back. Uh, actually, Starter, that's a really good draw. But he does have Toad. So we just go ahead and Fateful dump Enchantress. Enchantress effect to get our right. And we still have Griffin on the field. So he kind of has to negate this. Toad take. Chain Elf. Bring back Toad. Activate Starter. And the column that we know is our right. Toad negate starter, and from here, it's kind of a wrap, not gonna lie. <clears throat> Alright, let's think about this. Fateful effect to search the Draco back. I really love that interaction. It's pretty solid. Just mills it, because I didn't put it on top. That's clean. Switch to attack. Try to... This should be an attack, by the way. But he is going to Smashers. Banish Elf. And, alright, let's think about this before he does it. Is it better to hit Dagda or Griffin? I feel like no matter what, his Elf is getting outed. So, Griffin probably matter. Plague. We've already used our Hulk, so it's like that doesn't really matter either. So probably just the link to yeah, he hits the Dacta. Plague summon again. Run into Plague is really solid in this deck. Now we can get to the giant guy. Giant guy effect. This is going to summon jet. Jet effect. We've already use blue yeah this particular variant um doesn't play a high sprite count so it's just like one blue one jet one red one carrot ideally anyway 
get starter, but we can't use it because we already used it. But there's no other real good targets. But we could get plague again. Dark. Dark's gonna summon blue. And then, yeah, that's really solid. Get his blue effect. That's gonna get red. Um, he does have my starter and my right though, so he's actually in a good spot here. Activate starter. I don't know if we have enough interruptions that we can put up because he has so much extension. Link those into IP because we can just some get the Draco back on his turn. Summon red. Alright, so was it worth doing this over the elf play? Elf doesn't really do a whole lot here because we've already went through most of our sprites. We've already went through... We don't really need plague or anything on his turn. So yeah, I think just... I think this was correct, actually. I don't know if I could have done anything different here. Because going into dark is solid. If he does deal with this, then we get a search preferably like a crow or something and then if he starts doing anything crazy uh search draco back off fateful and then ip can go into unicorn spin we also have red and carrot so he activates right trigger fateful search draco back he's Going straight into battle phase. Let's probably try to deal with the IP and bait it. Alright, let's think about this. <clears throat> I actually think I had a misstep here too. I think this game might have been winnable. Because he already went through Smashers. So unless he's playing like the Obimaru, like Soul Sweeper guy. I don't think he can out an access code, right? Unless I'm missing something. Yeah, an IP that can be destroyed by card effects. Or uh, access code, sorry. Yeah, I think um, that actually would be the play here, right? So IP, I go IP, carrot, and a unicorn. Unicorn effects. Yeah, no, honestly, I think that was a misplay. I think I should have left the red and carrot, and then these two should just an access code because he doesn't have a real way to deal with it other than just Zeus so he's just gonna go ahead and normal which we knew he had jet in hand from the last turn from a pointer so after he summons that I feel like it's just only correct to red negate wait Wait a second. This should be destroyed. What? There's no way. Oh, he has starter anyway face down. I guess it doesn't matter, but Leela should be destroyed. I'm surprised I didn't catch that. Yeah, and then from here... He's just doing a lot, and I have no follow-up. So yeah, I definitely think there's a few things that I could have done differently in this match and not lost so hard. And I said, you got it. I have to play a tourney match. I want to run it back if you're still awake. I can't come back from this one. GG's. Yeah, that was, uh, that was rough. Um... But yeah, shout out Jib. Uh, he's definitely like one of my more solid testing partners. He's, yeah, he's kind of insane at this game. Um, but yeah, that does it for the video. Um, this is Alpha the Wizards uh, reporting out. Stay tuned for more content.